All right, I'm with Brian Summer again here at Oracle Cloud World slash Sweet World. Brian, I just want to talk to you briefly about the dark side of HR tech. You and I did a show on on that on our Enterprise Month in Review. We brought Bonnie Tinder on who talked about, she shared a bunch of data around the bugaboos around services and implementations. That was really interesting. But for the listeners that don't know, you you have a presentation out of the box, so to speak, <laughs> where you can go and, and riff on what's wrong with HR and what to do about it. And you're going to be given that soon, I think, aren't you? I've, um, I gave a preview of it on, um, for one show that'll be, I'll be at two weeks from now. Uh, you know, it was kind of a quick 10 minute teaser thing. Uh, I'm going to be talking more about it, uh, in Jakarta next week. Uh, how about that for taking Diginomica globally here? Um, you know, I don't want people to think I'm just a, a negative kind of guy, but I do look for how things are being used or misused or flat out abused. One of the things, and one of the vendors even here, one of the executives here got a little testy with me today because I asked a similar question of them a month and a half ago, and then I asked it yesterday. Ah, uh, the old... Hope Pesky Hope, question. Yeah, hoping they had actually had it in the month or month and a half since they'd uh, had actually had something to tell on it. But my here's the, the genesis of it. I know that there are a lot of citizen AI tools out there. I mean, there's not much written about them, but these are tools that are abundant on the web. If you want to write, if you want to polish up your resume, if you want to match your resume to a job description, if you want to generate a job description, you can find tons of these kind of tools for next to nothing or just free on the web. And they're all AI powered. And if you could use them, I could use them. And in fact, bazillions of job seekers are using this stuff every day. And, they're, and it's the unfortunate consequences and the lack of system thinking on the part of vendors that really bugs me. When you look at the product roadmaps of all these AI tools, and this is getting to the dark side, what are these people using? You know, what's going on is the vendors are only seeing how to use AI as an economic engine to drive more revenue for themselves and to maybe sell something to an enterprise kind of buyer, as opposed to thinking, how will other people like citizens, job seekers, alumni, how are they going to use these technologies and what's the implication of that usage on you? So some of the examples I show in audiences are like, the one guy that applied to 5,000 jobs in one week. Now, if you got more than a handful of people doing that, just think of what, how the inboxes of these recruiters are just mm. overflowing with that kind of stuff. Or you have people who, this is the other problem. I can't imagine anyone has actually got the work experience that perfectly matches the job descriptions that AI tools are generating for employers because they're asking for everything. And I mean everything. And I don't care if you've been in the biz 40 years in your particular career, you couldn't have done everything that's in that resume. And yet, yet people generate resumes that are perfected like that, and they're not qualified for the job. So what we have is this awful amount of just Drek filling up these ATSs and, and no one can really identify who the authentic job seeker in that whole pile of applications really is. I'll guarantee you it's not somebody who's getting a perfect match score out of the ATS. Those are people who cheat basically to get up there. But there's other problems. There are people that are, that are cheating their employer out of time and and collecting a pay stub for it. And one of those that got my attention was a guy who was working eight concurrent engineering jobs and is pulling down, is scheduled to pull down 1.5 million US dollars in salaries this year. And how does he do it? He applies virtually. He applies to multiple jobs all the time. And he knows it'll take six to eight weeks on average before he gets found out that he doesn't really do any work mm -hmm. and he'll get fired, but it doesn't bother him because he says it takes him less than three hours to find another job. Right. Uh, we have people who get automatic mouse clickers that uh, constantly trick a, an employer into thinking that you're really working when you're working from home 
And all these things you're doing are just giving fake mouse clicks back mm. to your employer. I could go on and on. The amount of the kind of fraud is unbelievable. And yet I don't see any vendors uh, addressing any of this kind of space. So your talk essentially functions as a wake up call then of <laughs> the world has changed on your watch and your software, your solutions haven't kept up. Yeah. Well, and I'm not necessarily preaching to the vendors, right. but I, I mean, I do that. Uh, I get them, I hit them hard at, you know, at, yeah. at these kind of events, but uh, it's the, the audiences I'm speaking. You're trying to, to alert the beleaguered hundreds of HR, HR professionals of, and, who, and essentially you need to up upskill and upschool yourself because it's a change world out there. Yeah, I yeah. feel like I feel like to some extent some of them are real naive technology virgins. And and I'm gonna come in and tell them, no, this is the dark, unseemly side of how things actually work and go down. Right. So they're, they're gonna have to embrace essentially a technology education as part of their HR careers because they need without some real digital savvy, they're not going to have the skills to confront these problems. I also, you're correct. And, uh, I also touch on problems with bad management and we don't have You to talk a lot about the bad manager. That's a really common theme for you. You feel that's pretty prevalent. Yes. And I think that, uh, Peter principal problems are still abundant as ever. And I, you know, you might, you don't have to be as old as I am to remember the book, The Peter Principle, but mm. the gist of the whole book is people get promoted to their level of incompetence. And at that point, they quit mm. getting promoted, but they're stuck. Uh, now you got somebody stuck in a position where they're not a great manager or leader. They're not as effective as they could be or whatever. Mm. And, uh, and we don't really have systems that spot these people, particularly the sadistic ones or the ones with really bad pathologies. Incompetence can be f found out, but malevolence generally is not mm. captured in a performance management system. Boy, that's a loaded soundbite of a oh, sentence Oh, yeah, there. indeed. Uh, that's going to really, I think, boost admission in some of these HR shows this fall, Brian. <laughs> well... <laughs> I aim to entertain. Yeah, no, you know, doubt, my, no doubt. My job is to send them out looking, uh, coming out of one of my sessions, looking like um, the Maxill tape ad of the 70s where the guy's sitting in the living room right in front of a stereo speaker and his hair's blowing back. The sound's coming out so loud and clear on, on his speakers. Yeah, and it sounds like part of your message, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that not only is your HR sort of understanding, like, needs to change dramatically for this new landscape, but don't count on an HR tech vendor to come into your workplace and solve this for you with some out-of-the-box solution because it's not going to get solved out of the box, is it? Yeah, after all these decades of covering HR vendors, I'd have to say their primary focus is how do we use technology to solve some, like, usually a first-level automation problem in right. HR. They're not really there solving the core problems of managing, motivating, driving, and getting great results out of the workforce. Nor are they interested at all in looking about what about the people outside of the organization, our alumni, our, you know, the job seekers, the retirees, the subcontractors, uh, or people way down the value chain or supply chain that work and live, excuse me, in communities and are dependent on our firm basically to provide jobs directly or indirectly to those markets. And there are the systems to deal with that are woefully scarce and pitifully featured. So yeah, there's a lot of space to grow in what people call human capital. All right. Well, I think uh, vendors are going to really look forward to seeing you this fall then, Brian. This is <laughs> If this shows any indication, this, <laughs> there's going to be some classic confrontations oh. coming up. So any vendors listening to this, consider yourself warned. Even, even with Dr. Pepper in hand, which Brian has right now, you may have some problems. If Brian doesn't have Dr. Pepper, I think you're totally screwed. Uh, yeah, it cracks me up how many 
analysts and PR people come running up. Oh, they're, they're scrambling for the Dr. Pepper I saw this week, man. Yeah, and they come yeah. running up, bringing a bottle of Dr. Pepper right over to me. Unfortunately, and, it didn't help that much, I'm afraid. It only helped uh, it, a little bit. It, it can help so, some, but... Yeah, yeah. So, but, so, so anyway, with our listeners, I think what we did just now is laid out a really big problem statement. So I will honor in the fall sometime, either one of our video shows, whatever, return to this topic. And then we're going to ask Brian what he learned from the shows this fall and if he has any updates to his problem statements, either solutions that he's seen or more likely more problems that he's uncovered. So I'm looking forward to regrouping on this. Well, Good luck on the road. <laughs> Thanks for that. Um, I'll definitely be earning the miles. I think I'm scheduled. I may break one of my records at the HR Tech Show in a couple of weeks. Uh, I might be at like 23 vendor briefings. I was going to say 73. I think that's hmm? 73 vendor briefings. No, 23. Oh, 23. Uh, yeah. If I did 73, I'd be <laughs> kind of tired. Still, 23 is not shabby, dude. Oh, so, yeah. In a couple of days, plus yeah. I'm doing a couple of talks in between all that. Yeah, uh, we, we might do a need to do a health check after the 23rd there. By the way, at that show last year, um, one of the analysts walks right up to me, uh, like the day, end of day two or something, he goes, Brian, have you made any vendors cry yet? And I'm like, God, Lord, what is my yeah. reputation here? But uh, the answer was no, I hadn't. In fact, one lady asked me, well, how did we do, you know, yeah. pitching her startup? And I just felt generous. I go, I'll... I'll give you a B. And she was doing the Toyota, oh, what a feeling, jumping in the air in the press room and yelling at the top of lungs, I got a B. I got a B. Wow. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> Real life stories from she, the road, folks. She probably took that news to her um, uh, venture capital firm to say, I, I need a higher valuation on our Yeah, we round. secured a whole new funding round thanks to our B from the infamous <laughs> Brian Summer. All right, Brian, well, let's shut down the applicant tracking system and call this a partnership, man. We're, we're good. <laughs> the partnership is good. Thank you, John. Absolutely. All right, folks, catch you next time. See ya.